Okay, when we met um, this speaker, Joseph Don, the person I'm about to introduce to us, you know, going through his page and all of that, there was something he said. He said, um, you need to follow up your clients so they take you serious. And by God's grace, we followed him up and he took us serious. So I want you to take this serious as well, okay? Yes, yeah, so who is Joseph Don? Joseph Don is a sales and marketing expert, a public speaker, and an astute thought leader with a passion to help people attain financial freedom. Joseph is the founder of KZN Digital Academy, Color Me Visual, and the Joseph Don Company. He has been featured on Rave TV and other media outfits. He has written eight books, which includes The Sales Guide and WhatsApp Cash Out Blueprints. Joseph Don also hosts shows like Everything Sales and Marketing with hundreds of listeners, Bash, Business and Sales Hangouts, KZN Hangouts, and KZN Fest. He has trained over 5,000 entrepreneurs, helping many of them move from zero to seven figures monthly. Please put your hands together. Give a gateway shout. As we make welcome our host, our guest for tonight, Joseph Don. Oh wow! Good evening, everybody. Good to see you all. Um, I've been enjoying all the sessions. I joined the managerial session because, of course, I want to learn how to become a better manager. Thank you very much for inviting me, um, sir and your team. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks to Pastor George as well for making it possible for me to be here. You know, funny enough, while, while we are coming down this evening, I remembered something. So, the year was 2020 and I made a post on Facebook. Um, was it Facebook or Twitter? I said, the Igbo entrepreneurship system has um, produce more millionaires than your regular universities. And then I saw a like, George, is not liked your tweets. And I'm like, hmm. Okay, and then I was coming to that, I was remembering, I'm saying, wow. So he liked my tweets two years ago, and I'm on this platform speaking now. Thank you, Pastor George, wherever you are. <laughs> All right. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking business. We have, we have done everything, all protocols duly observed. I'm going to go straight to the point. I'm supposed to teach you how to build a simple business that can generate at least 100K per month for you every month. Who's ready to learn? Are we good? Ready to learn? If you're ready to learn, can you say ready? ready. Was that weak? Can you say ready? All right, great. <laughs> okay. So I'm not a very intelligent person, but I try. I have my notes here, so I'll be reading from my notes. But before I go ahead, my name is Joseph Don. They've already told you everything. I'm the founder of Kaizen Digital Academy. And let me quickly tell you what Kaizen Digital Academy is. Is this my time I'm seeing here? That was not what we agreed on. <laughs> so let me tell you quickly about Kaizen Digital Academy. Kaizen Digital Academy is like Udemy, it's like Coursera, but it is built for Africans. So instead of, um, you know, when I started learning how to make money online, uh, I took a lot of courses. I was learning from, you know, white people and all that. And they use terms that are specific to their region. So for example, they say something like, 401k. There's, there's nothing like that in Nigeria. You don't know what 401k is. Um, here, for example, somebody like Grant Cardone um, closing a sale over the, he's living at like a webcast, and he asks the person, what card do you use? So the person wants to buy his program, and he asks the person, what card do you use? Do you use American Express, MasterCard, or Visa? The person says American Express. He says, what's the last four digits of your card? Hmm. You can't ask me the last four digits on my card in Nigeria. I can't tell you, sir. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so, um, so what we've done with Kaizen Digital Academy, basically, is 
we have created a platform for Africans to learn from Africans. So we use our own examples, use our own terms, we relate with you in a way that you can understand. Simple exercise right now, I want everyone to take out their smartphone. Of course, you should have data. And go to www.kaizenacademy.co. I'll spell it for you. K-A-I-Z-E-N Academy.co. Okay? I'd like you to quickly create an account. And then you could take any course you like. There are different courses there from, you know, how to make money using WhatsApp, cryptocurrency trading, copywriting. There, there are just a lot of courses there by African lecturers prepared for Africans like you and I. Okay, enough selling. Let's go. How to build a 100K per month business. So what is business, basically? Let's have a conversation. What is business? Anybody? Hello? What is business? Yes? Is what? The act, the act of exchanging value for money. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, business is the act of exchanging value for money. Right? So, business, like what she said, is exchanging value for money. So, it's basically like a commercial activity. Right? I have valuable, something valuable. You need what I have. I give it to you and you give me money, right? So with that, you agree that you don't make money in a void, right? Hello? Does money fall from heaven? Is it heavenly money? Is, is money, is Naira a currency of heaven? <laughs> Good. So money is of the earth, right? That means to get money, you do earthly things, right? Good. So basically, how money is made is that typically you exchange value for money, right? Money is a product of value creation. Money is not a product of praying and fasting, amen? Amen? Don't you agree with that? Is money a product of praying and fasting? <laughs> if, you, if you pray that money fell from heaven, would, would you pick it? <laughs> Okay, topic for another day. But typically, when God even wants to bless you, God passes through men, right? Okay, good. Because money is man-made. So basically, if I want to make money, I'd either have a product or a service for sale, right? That's how money is made. There's no two ways about it. Whether offline, whether online, <laughs> whether in the spirit world... <laughs> If there's anything like that, no matter where you want to make money from, you must exchange value for money. So the question you want to ask yourself is, what value do I have to exchange? Because at the end of the day, if you don't have any value to exchange, you won't make any money. Money is a product of value creation. Money is not a product of wishful thinking. Ah, I wish I feel your girl one million now. <laughs> you, don't, you don't make money by wishing. You make money by exchanging value. So people will pay you money. Listen, you know, the truth is that you agree that things are tough in Nigeria right now, right? But do you know there is not everybody that things are tough for? You know, so no, everybody will sat by the hood. You know that, right? Okay, now, things are tough in Nigeria. Anybody you go to meet now will tell you that things are tough, right? But if you go to spa right now, it's not empty. Why? I thought there's no money in the country. Flight tickets are like from 70K to 100K right now for economy. That's freaking expensive, right? But if you go to the airport, you see people flying. What does that tell you? That there's what? Money. So the question right now has to be, what kind of value do I have to exchange? Because people are typically selfish. So they ask the question, what is in it for me? If they have a strong reason to give you money, they will give money to you. But people are not just throwing money around. People are not just throwing money around. So you want to start asking yourself, what problem can I solve? If you can solve a problem that is worth giving money for, then people are going to give you money. So money is not difficult to be made. Money is simple. It's not difficult. It is simple. 
I did not say it is easy, by the way. Thank you very much for this. I did not say it is easy, by the way. It is simple. That means you can easily figure out how to make money. Okay, so we have established the fact that you must have, ah, my time is not showing again. No. <laughs> you must establish the fact that you must have something valuable to exchange for money, right? Right? I want to communicate with you in a way you can understand, though. So, you must exchange something valuable for money. The question now becomes, how do you find people who need the value you have to exchange, right? That is where understanding marketing and sales comes in. So, what is marketing? Marketing simply means putting your products out there. That's what marketing is in simplest terms. It means showcasing what you have to offer to other people. That's marketing. Selling is basically how you get them to give you the money. So selling is how you convince them that, oh, different people have these products, but my product is better. This is why you need my product, so you should give me the money. That's what selling is. So marketing is basically selling on steroids. So selling is... I'm out here to convince you that there are plenty of people selling water, but my own water is the one you have to take now. Why? Because my water has this, it has this, it has this. Selling. Okay. Great. So, you have to understand that if you're ever going to be successful as a business person, I'm going to emphasize on this right now before I move on. If you're ever, ever, ever going to be successful as a business person, then you must learn how to carry your market on your head. You must learn how to sell shamelessly. You must learn it. You must learn it. Sales is the core of every business. No matter what you do, you're a graphic designer, you're a web developer, you own a hairdressing salon, you're a chef. Sales is the lifeblood of every business. So if you want to make money from your business, if you want to ever get wealthy from doing business, get rich from doing business, then sales is something you must understand. Don't ignore it. Don't say I'm not the selling type. I'm not the talking type. Oh, customer with my own go come to me. What go down for me? It doesn't happen that way. That's the talk of poverty. The customer that is your own, is the one that you also for, the one that you show your product to, the one that you convince them to buy from you, the one that you put in effort to market to. Because let me tell you, you're not the only one doing your kind of business. There's really no unique business. There are just people improving upon what other people have been doing. Different versions of the same thing. So for every business you have, there's somebody else that is doing it. If you don't give me a strong reason to buy from me, I'll buy from somebody else. So you have, to, you have to really get this sales thing and say, this thing, I must sabi, I must dwam. You have to really get this marketing thing, right? Some people have, you know, Facebook pages, Instagram pages, Twitter pages, and they don't post. And you expect to make sales. How are you going to make sales if you're not showing up every day? If you're not posting? Like the chef was saying, you know, some people, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you post two times in a month. How do you expect to make sales like that? If you have to make sales, especially if you're starting a business, you know, that you don't have very big capital, you have to leverage social media and all that, you need to show up every day. You need to show up every day. You need to make a post every day about your business. You need to show up every day. Every day, 30 days in a month. Because that's where your business is, really. Some business owners are just busy but they're not doing profit-producing activities. And profit-producing activities are basically activities that lead to sales. Some people just come and they scroll on Instagram all day. You watch Sabinus, you watch Just So Funny, you watch everybody. Who is watching you? Who is seeing what you have to sell? Some of you argue about Ronaldo and Messi. You argue, you argue about everybody, but you don't say something about your business every day. You post all the memes from everybody on your WhatsApp status, but you don't post one about your business. How do you expect to grow that business? How do you expect to make sales? You can't make sales that way. You can't make money that way. 
People that know me know that every day I wake up, I must talk about my business. Every day. Every day. I'm a, I'm a coach and consultant. And one thing I do is that I sell trainings. I teach people how to sell a market. I teach you know, people how to make money using WhatsApp as a tool. I teach people how to become better salespeople and all that. And for every training I have, you can never see me not talk about it. You have to master this selling thing. You have to master this marketing thing. Because that's how your business will go forward. I'm hammering on this because really, that's the major part of growing any business, sales and marketing. People have to be buying what you're selling. If people are not buying what you're selling, you cannot have revenue to grow the business. Are you with me? Yeah. Are we still together? Yeah. All right, good. Talking about sales and marketing, by the way, I wrote a book in 2019. It's called The Sales Guide, A Practical Approach to Sales and Closing. And I came with a few copies. I think it came with like 10 copies. It's 6,000 Naira. But if you get it tonight, they'll give you for a 50% discount. So you can get it at 3,000 Naira. It's, it's somewhere around. There are like 10 copies there, so you should rush it. Good. Next thing I want to tell you is that when you start, or when you want to start a business, another thing you want to do is to focus on the business that pays you and ignore the naysayers. Really, people will always talk about anything you do. If you're, not, if you're not hustling, people will talk. If you're hustling, you sit down every time to the post business, every time to the carry market for you. Every, not only on Sabi, people, people always have something to say. People always have an opinion. People always, you know, are going to talk. But one thing people will not do, people will not take responsibility for you. So, people can talk about you, but they will not dash you money. They will not give you free money. It reminds me of this song. Ah, uh, Adults would not scam you better get out for your mind. You got to hustle, make a living. You know the song? Two, four, seven. See that part? Nobody go ask if you don't chop. Nobody go send you free money. If you no get now, you sabi. Adults would not. <laughs> really? Really? Right? People are going to talk. But you, you have to mind the business that pays you. You have to focus. As long as what you're doing is legal as long as it's not against the law of God, then carry it on your head. Do it with all your might. Do it with all your might. No matter what kind of business it is. You know, my poor in Igbo we say, Akaja ja nebute onu manu manu. What that means is that dirty hands usually leads to oily mouths. That's what it means. That means when you get your hands dirty and work, the product is that you have food to eat. Right? And you know, really, a lot of businesses, a lot of businesses that churn out millions every month are not sweet looking businesses. They don't wear suit and tie. They are not sexy businesses. You know, I did a study on people that sell in traffic, gala, and all that. Most of those people you see in traffic make as much as 500k, 300k every month. You might sit down in your boat or in your taxi and you're passing and you're seeing this pool, it's they run, it's this one, it's then chasing after. They, they make as much as 300k to five. In fact, there are some of them that make at least a million a month doing that. It's not sexy. I know people that make millions selling air freshener, I know people that make millions selling phone batteries. As long as that business is legal, then carry it on your head, though. You know that people that do suck away business shit? You know they make millions every month? You say, ah, I don't think on your shit. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, a, it's a money vomiting venture. You know, when you make the money at the end of the day, nobody, the money will not be smelling shit. You, you know, the money your account will smell shit, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right let's look at what, what are the examples of some like some business models that can generate you at least 100k every month you can start a product based business can you give me an example of product based businesses crayfish nice that's a product yes any other person peanuts yes okay any other person popcorn are you calling food food Detergent, great. Liquid soap, okay. What else? 
Hmm? Human hair. That's a product. Pure, pure is, is not really a product. Human hair, yes? Any other person? Clothes. Any other person? Shoes. Good. Any other person? Hmm? Creams. Organic creams. Confection. Nobody, nobody mentioned the mobile app. Don't think it's a product. <laughs> Like the, the pastor that taught here said, and enlarge your mind. Crayfish is good, POS is good, all the things are good. <laughs> will expand your mind. So you can start a product based business where you basically sell a product, right? And make money selling that product. And now there are a lot of examples. You have mentioned a lot of examples. What we are talking is a simple business that can actually give you 100K every month. I'm going to like give you a system and everything you need to get started with that and do it. So follow me. Now, the next thing you can do is to sell your skill as a service. What skills do you think we can sell as services? Hairdressing, good. Catering, yes. What else? Fashion designing, okay, yes. Public speaking, great. What else? You said? Dry cleaning, great. Yes, what else? Huh? Advertising, good. That's a skill you can sell as a service. I do that myself. I used to anyway, not anymore. Yes. Language interpretation, good stuff. Yes. Mapping. I didn't hear you. Barbing, great. I, I posted on Facebook the day before yesterday. People didn't know that... I used to barb. I learned barbing in 2013, and I used to barb. I've done a lot of things in this my small life. <laughs> Good. So you can sell your skill as a service, right? Great. So start thinking, what, what kind of skill do I have? What can I sell as a service to people? It could be washing cars. It could be cleaning, right? It could be making hair. What skill do I have? If I don't have one, then I learn, right? Think digital skills now as well. Think copywriting. Think, what else? Video editing. Think graphic design. Think, what else? Web design, yes. What else? What else? Ah, content creation, social media management, yeah? What else? There are plenty, there are thousands and one of them. Product design, beautiful, beautiful. So product design basically has to do with designing products like UI, UX, web apps, and all that. That's product design. The third thing you could do is to be a middleman or an affiliate. If you go to big markets, this, this, this system has been existing for years. If you go to big markets, they call them indoor swahia. <laughs> right? And really, when I started selling online, that is how I started. Let me tell you my short story. So the year is 2016. I'm interning at NMPC. I used to work as a process plant operator, and intern, by the way, but I was so good, I used to handle the plant alone. And um, we used to earn 21,000 naira every month back in 2016. So the company car is taking me to the station one day, and then I hear a man on radio, God bless him so much, his name is Kalada Hart. And then he says, oh, I'm going to teach you how to make money online. I'm holding a seminar at Voyage Ranch Hotel, Elekaya. That was close to my house. I said, I'm going to attend. Luckily, I was off that day I attended. And then he broke down like different internet business models, how you can do it. So the first thing I did was I quickly wrote an ebook on how to make money online. Wrong move. <laughs> Why? Because I'd never made money online before. And the first thing, a lot of people do that this is, and that's very wrong. Uh, I wrote an ebook on how to make money online. And then I started running a Facebook ad around it. I priced it at 500 naira, and I made zero sales. In fact, somebody called me from the ad and said, uh, I saw your ad online. This is 500 naira. Will you give me a discount? I got discouraged. Ah, discount, Bao, 500 naira. <laughs> so I had to turn off the ad, and I had to advise myself that, guy, you're not supposed to be teaching. Right now, you're supposed to be practicing what you learned and not teaching. A lot of people make that mistake, just jump into teaching. But what you want to do, if you want to ever teach anything, when you learn it, you have to do it first, and then before you go ahead to teach, you cannot teach what you have not done. So I started to try out the local model of dropshipping, which also affiliate marketing, which also middleman. 
So I went to Garrison in Port Harcourt here. And I met this lady. I told her that I'm an online marketer. I like to partner with her to sell her phones. She sells phones. I said, so what I'll, I'll do, I'll take pictures of the phones, beat down the price for me. When I go online, I'll market it at my own price, and then all you need to do is to deliver to the customer. And she said, okay, no problem. And that's how I started business. I took pictures of the phone. I ran a Facebook ad, and boom, I started getting orders. In the first week, we did over 150,000 naira in the first week. I'm like, hmm, this thing is working. So I decided to double down, and I started doing it until I stopped anyway, because they wanted to use army and come and carry me one day. <laughs> so uh, somehow, somehow, she was selling refurbished phones, and I didn't know. So they wanted to come and carry me, go where I don't know. <laughs> I had to beg. I said, let me take you to the place so they will change it for you. <laughs> and that's how I stopped. But yes, yeah, so you can become a middleman. And it doesn't have to be for phones. It can be that it's called drop servicing. There's a model like that called drop servicing. So somebody needs a web developer. I know a web developer. I broker the deal. So the web developer takes 100K and as I charge 150K totally. I give the web developer 100K. I keep 50K for myself. That's a business model you could try as well. Middleman. You could, you know, there are just a lot of them. So you have to decide. And that one is teaching. Teaching. So you're an expert. You have knowledge. You can sell your knowledge. You can make money from selling your knowledge. You can teach online. You can host your courses on skillshare.com. You can host your courses on udemy.com. There's seller now, seller.co, seller.co. You can create an online course and host it as well. Basically, see, teaching is not only business because see me, teaching is not only business. You know, there are a lot of things that people need to learn from marriage to baking to, you know, people even learn um, in the modest, in a very modest way, baby making. <laughs> yes, online. Online, yeah. So, teaching. The other thing you do, another thing you could do is writing. You could write a book, write an e-book, write a book like I've just now I've written over eight. In my lifetime, I should write at least 200 books. I've written over eight now. So, writing. So, what you want to do is to choose any of these business models. Now, I've given you business models. People make millions from these business models monthly. I don't know your personality type. I don't know where you're from. I don't know the kind of thing you can handle. So I cannot tell you, do this one, do this one, do this one. But now, out of everything we have mentioned, now, choose one. Choose one that you're going to start with. You may already have one. Since you have one, let us now see. How can you make 100K per month doing that business? Are you ready for this now? Are we still together? Great. Hope you're getting value so far. All right. So, the 100K per month blueprint. So, the first step is to identify your ideal customer. Who is your ideal customer? Who is your ideal customer? Because at the end of the day, if you, if you market to everybody, you're selling to nobody. If you think everybody is your customer, everybody cannot be your customer. Ice cream is sweet, but everybody does not like ice cream. Everybody cannot like what you're doing. So you have to focus and say, who is my customer? For me personally, my business, my customers are business owners who want to increase their sales. Those are my customers. So you now in your business, you have to define your customers. Are you a caterer? Are you servicing busy people who have to work nine to five every week and you don't have time to cook? Who are you servicing? Are you into dry cleaning services? Who are your customers? Because the same thing that makes a married woman, you know, tick, the same thing that makes a married woman buy, it cannot be the same thing that makes a single lady buy. They have different priorities. The thing that makes a single guy buy it's not the same thing that makes a married man buy. They have different priorities. So one thing that choosing your ideal customer or defining your ideal customer helps you to do is that it helps you to master your marketing message. I'm coming to that. Because you now know how you, how you will keep your mouth and talk, right? The same way you talk to a married man. If, Young guys like myself, we have different priorities from married. The married man right now, this is August, this is September, rather. He's thinking about school fees. <laughs> so, 
He's thinking about school fees. This, the same thing you would tell him now. Is not, so the marketing angle I may come from, now I can now say something like, um, you know, if you get this program, you can make enough money and he can afford you to pay your child school fees. So that will make him tick. But if I say that to a single guy, he's not paying any school fees. So you have to know who your ideal customer is. Right? How many minutes do I have? Let me see to so I'll know. The next one is your marketing message. That's the next one. Your marketing message. Look, I still have time. Great. Your marketing message is basically what you say to your customers. That's your marketing message. What do I say to get them to buy? That is marketing message. How do I keep my mouth and talk? What do I say to them? So the first thing you should know is your ideal customer. The second thing is your marketing message. You got that? Good. The third thing is marketing channels. Marketing channels basically means different avenues. Different avenues. Different avenues by which you can reach your ideal customers. Those are marketing channels. Right? So, can you give me an example of a marketing channel? Intelligent people in the house. Amen? Marketing channel example? Yes, social media. Yes. You have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have Twitter, you have WhatsApp, very powerful too. You have, what else? TikTok. How many of you are on TikTok? Ah, people should create a, a TikTok account. It's not just for children, no. I'm on all of them, no. LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat. <laughs> the, the, because the idea is you have to be everywhere. If you Google me, you will see me. You have to be everywhere. You have to be findable. It's one thing to have value. Is one thing to be visible. If you don't know me, you cannot buy from me. Abby, if you're the greatest in the world and nobody knows about it, what will happen? Nobody will come to you. Isn't it? Beautiful. So you have to identify your marketing channels. What marketing channels am I going to use? What, based on, on my kind of business, I'm not determined. What kind of marketing channel will I use? Will I just go solo organic marketing? Will I use paid ads? Will I combine both? Organic marketing simply means using your general normal effort to market to people. That is organic. Anything that doesn't involve paying is organic. Paid marketing basically refers to paying for Marketing, paying to get customers to you. So you could do Facebook ads, Instagram ads, you know, LinkedIn ads, Google ads. You could do influencer ads. It's not every product that Facebook ads work for like that. Right? Facebook ads works, but what I'm talking now is more like direct response marketing. Because as a small business owner, that's what you should focus on. There are like different kinds of marketing. There's brand marketing. There's direct resource marketing. Brand marketing is what you do to increase your brand reach, to increase awareness. That's what the likes of Coca-Cola does, MTN does. You see their ads everywhere, right? They are increasing their brand awareness and brand reach. It's not necessarily targeted at making sales part time. So they can spend billions on ad. It will eventually like result to selling. To eventually convert to sales, but the cycle is longer. Direct response just means that I want to spend 5K on ads. I want to at least break even. I want to make that 5K back. I want to make back 10K. For every one naira I spend, I want to make back two naira. That is direct response marketing. So there are, there are two like, different things. Right? Good. So you have to figure out your marketing channels. The next thing after figuring out your marketing channels is to now actually generate leads. Lead generation. What does lead generation mean? Lead generation just means getting customers to come to you. So everything you have done from step one to step four right now, you will now execute. Generate leads. Right? You put out the ad. You start marketing every day. You start talking about your business every day. You start doing different things, using different angles, different strategies, different tactics to make sure that people are coming to you. If your conversion center, we're coming to that, is WhatsApp. That means you have to now start doing everything every day to make sure that at least five new people come to my WhatsApp every day to inquire about my products. That's lead generation. At least five people every day locate my business. That's lead generation. So you have to generate these get customers. Because at the end of the day, without customers, your, your business is worth nothing. Right? Customers are how you make money. So if you cannot get those customers, then you should not be in business. So you have to now do lead generation. Set aside, I talk about that in this my book. Make sure you get it. Set aside a monthly budget for marketing. Set aside the monthly budget for marketing for lead generation. Because at the end of the day, people think that marketing is an expense, but marketing is not an expense. Marketing is an investment, not an expense. Sometimes I carry my last money to put inside Facebook ads. And it's my last money. 
<laughs> but I will make sales, so the money will come back. Right? So take out, take out of your income. Right? Set aside a part of your income for marketing. Now, the next one is to, you know, put out your offer. After you have generated leads, show them your offer. Show them how you're better than their, your competitors. Put out your offer. That is the fifth one. The sixth one is conversion or closing. Conversion or closing. This is where you close a deal. This is where money exchanges hands. Conversion or closing. All right, cool. So conversion or closing. This is where money exchanges hands. This is where you use all your sweet mouths, all the sweet mouths you have in this world. It's not only for chiking women, brothers, amen? It's, use it for your business, amen? amen. Use it, don't be afraid. This is the part where you collect the money. Hmm? Don't be afraid. If you, if you want to buga, you have to first collect your money. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to collect your money. Don't be afraid of asking for money. You have value. You have something that you're selling. Why are you afraid of asking for money? See, you have to see your leads, your people that are coming to you every day to inquire about your business as potential money. And if you're not asking them to bring the money to you, you know, like we can say, give me this power. I, I want to take this power. Hey, I want to take this money. <laughs> Collect the money. Amen. Great. And then the last one on my list is follow-up. Follow-up. The money is made in the follow-up. That's where the money is made. You know, from statistics, around 10% of people that interact with your business the first time will buy from you. So let's do a simple math. Let's say you generate 1,000 leads. Leads are basically people, people who are interested or people who are likely going to become your customer. Those are leads. So let's say you generate 1,000 leads and 10% of them buy your product. Let's say you have a 5K product, right? And 10% of them buy that 5K product. 10% of 1,000 is how many? 100 times 5K. How much would they have made? Hmm? 500K, right? He has done for me. He has done for me. You come, you give testimony. Brethren, I made 500K. Praise God. God is blessing my business. But God wants to bless your business more. God wants you to move from just that 10%. So, you don't think about, what happens to the remaining 90 people? You have closed 10%. What happens to the 90? What business owners ideally do is that they leave those people and then they go in search of new customers. And then they close 10% again, and then the cycle continues. What system do you have in place to follow up the people that don't buy now? Because really, there are people that are going to buy now. There are people that are going to buy later. There are people that are going to buy much later. How do you follow them up? I have somebody, the person has been on my list since 2018, 2019. The person bought something from me for the first time last year. So the person was on my list for like Two years plus without buying anything from me. But I didn't let go of the person. You have to follow up. That is where the money is made. Somebody, you and somebody, you're having a conversation in the DM and all that. And then, you know, something, something happened. The person doesn't reply you again. Somebody tells you, I will get back to you. The person doesn't reply you again. And then you just, you know, you leave the person. Ah, customer with my own. It will come to me. You know, go stress me. I don't believe in chasing people. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well. <laughs> See, if you are, if you want to make money, then master this follow up thing, right? If if you, in fact if you want to have any true conversion, whether in life anything really, you must master follow up. That sister told you no once does not mean that she does not really like you. Follow up. <laughs> you know what follow up does. If, especially in business, follow-up makes your customer see that you're actually serious with what you're doing. They, they, begin to, they begin to take you seriously. Somebody um, reached out to me one time and said, wow, your sales team, their follow-up is, you, I don't know how you teach those guys, their follow-up is beautiful, I'm going to buy. Follow-up. You have to follow-up. So assignments, all those customers that you have been talking to before that did not reply, that told you, I will, you know, put it, I will get back to you, they don't get back to you, and you just leave them like that. You are losing money. 
Because what will typically happen is that sometimes, let's say you're talking to a nursing mother and you know her child was crying, she had to go attend to her child and she wanted to probably buy your human hair, she had to go attend to her child and then she forgot that you were having a conversation and you just ignore her and then she, see, she sees the next human hair out next tomorrow and then she buys from the person. So you're the one that agitated her interests but you're nowhere to be found. Why? You did not follow up. So you have to be committed to following up. I think I'm done. So basically, everything we have said now is number one, you have to identify your ideal customer. The second thing is that you have to identify your marketing message. The next thing is you have to figure out and decide your marketing channels. Next one is you have to generate leads. Next one is you have to present your offer. Next one is that you have to convert them, right? Close or ask for money. And the next one, the last is you have to follow up. Are we good, everybody? Yes. Is this actionable enough? Yes. Are you sure? Is this actionable enough? Yes. One last thing I did not add in all this is that you have to do the math. You have to do the math. You have to know your numbers. For you to make 100K per month on a 5K per unit product, how many products do you want to sell? Do you need to sell to get 100K per month? You sell 20. It helps you strategize. In... in 30 days and to sell 20 products. How many do I have to sell every week? How many do I have to sell every day? If you know your numbers, then your business can never go under. If you know your numbers. You have to know. Numbers reveal the true state of a business. You know, if people can be doing braggado everywhere. Our business is the leading this one. We are the leading this one. What does your number say? At the end of the day, what does your number say? So, really, where am I taking the questions here? Or am I going to sit down? Yeah. All right, good. So what does your number say? You have to know your number. So if you have not done that math before, do the math. What is my financial goal? What is my financial target for the month? How many units of my products do I need to sell to get to that target? Figure it out. It will help you now have a target, a proper target, and help you chase what it is that you're supposed to chase. Are you blessed tonight? Are we good? All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, they said... I should take questions for 10 minutes, so um, we can take questions now. All right, somebody, five minutes, no problem. What's the time, please? It's up to 8 o'clock. The best team in the world is playing. It's up to 8 o'clock. All right. Who knows Manchester United plays today? Who knows that? All right, good. <laughs> yes, somebody has a question so you over take there. Take numbers, sir. Let's start from. Okay, you want us to take a number? Okay, yes. one, two, who else? Nobody. Why is there nobody asking questions in this room? Or yeah, somebody should raise up your hand. <laughs> Two here, one here, three questions, right? Good, let's take the three questions. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Thank you for the section. Okay, so when you were talking about the 100K per month blueprint, you said identify your ideal customers. Okay, for example, I sell seafood. I sell crayfish and I don't have a shop, meaning I do basically online. I market online. Yes. So when I'm marketing online, how do I, because when I put up my post online, I'm actually putting it up for everyone following me to see or if I make a sponsor that. So how will I identify and hit at a particular or to an ideal or a unique audience? Who, who do you want to sell to? I want to sell to... High-end users, I want to sell to caterers, I want to sell to international customers. Beautiful. The, the simple thing is to talk in a way that they want to hear. That's why we said, just identify your ideal customer doesn't mean that you will come here and say, you're my ideal customer. Right? But you know it's in your heart. In, you, you know it on paper that these are my ideal customers. That means all my marketing efforts, everything I'm saying are targeted towards these people. So I'm talking in a way they can relate so that they can eventually reach out to me. Do you, do you get the point? So, for example, I want to sell to put. I want to make money online. I'm going to start talking about things that are relating to making money online. That way, I'll attract people that want to make money online. Do you get? I want to. I want to talk about sales and marketing. I will start talking about sales and marketing. I will attract people who want to get better at selling, who want to make more sales in their business. So, basically, what I mean is, de decide who am I? Who am I marketing for? Then all your marketing energy and effort will be channeled towards those people. That's it, basically. That's your question. Great. 
Please don't ask me the one I can answer. <laughs> All right. Good evening, church. Good, Good evening, sir. Thank you for the privilege. Um, I want to ask um, if you have a client or clients that you've um, lost, like kind of um, you've lost them due to your poor services, how do you restore the relationship? By, by talking to them, there are different ways you could do it. You could, are you married, sir? No, sir. Okay. If, so if you're married, you could tell your wife to call the person. Restore the relationship. You can tell your mother. You can tell your brother. You can reach out to the person yourself. You can send gifts to the person. The, the relationship is important because it makes you money. So, there's no magic secret hack to it. It's all interpersonal relationships. So, you have, you have to find a way to reach out to the person, apologize if you have to, and set, settle it. What I'm trying to say is... Um one of my clients called me for services. Yes. I was not in town. Yes. I told him, though I told him I will refer someone to him. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the person disappointed, um, disappointed me. Yes. And then he, he ordered for another person. And the person did the job for her. Yes. But I need her back. Reach out to her. Send her a gift or something. Send her a thoughtful gift with a note attached to it. Something as little as people that sell food trays and all that. You could send one to her with a note attached to it. And it's, it's just all in your imagination at the end of the day. Thank you. All right. Last question. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening, Ma. Um, I think um, you've been saying um, more of business, business. How about career? If, for example, I'm a teacher and I want to earn more, how do I do it? Ah, Thanks. sorry, you don't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a career trainer. <laughs> okay, so it must be right. It must be. I must be what? I'm listening. How do you market your career online? How do you market your career online? Yes. Online. It's one of the models we talked about, yeah. right? Teaching. Basically, that's what I do as well. I teach. Right, so depending on what you teach, if what 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 do you teach? I'm a linguist. I teach English. You teach English. Good. There, do you know that there are a lot of online courses about English? Why do you think people have to write IELTS every year to go to countries like Canada? They don't know English. People don't know pronunciations. People don't know the difference between who and whom. People don't know the difference between I am and am. You see them use it interchangeably. Put on the reference saying, I couldn't agree more and I couldn't agree less. So what are you going to do as somebody that teaches English? You're going to come online and you're going to start correcting all those things. You're going to start talking about it. You're going to start teaching people how to actually, you know, properly speak English. You take one problem, you solve it. You take another problem, you solve it. You take another problem, you solve it. And at the end of the day, you sell something related to that problem you solve. That's it basically. You, by doing that, people don't understand the power of the internet. The, the internet, I was in Port Harcourt here when I got my first TV interview gig in Lagos. From the internet, as long as, long as you, know, you know something 2% better than other people, you can teach them. Some people, you know, you want to have all the master's degrees and PhD. And I don't have a degree in marketing and sales. I studied civil engineering in school. I don't. But, you know, um, I started getting interested in marketing and selling, and then I, I started taking a lot of courses and learning and, and practicing and all that, and that's how I got to where I am today. So as, as long as what you have is valuable, go ahead. The world is your stage. Thank you very much, people. God bless you. Shall you invite me again, Abby? Yes, so <laughs> please put those hands together right. for Joseph Don. Jam those hands together. Make it louder, please. Thank you, sir. Make it louder. 